There are many Tijuanas within Tijuana itself. The chaotic, the dangerous, the one that it's in a hurry, the one that doesn't sleep or rests, the diverse. Although we could talk about all the bad things that have happened and are still happening here, but with Fernanda we decided to meet on Juana, the Tia Juana. When we were camping at the peak of Cerro Colorado, they told us many stories of Tijuana, as if they were taken out of a horror movie. But there is one story we want to share with you, and it's about Tia Juana's ranch. She had a hotel in a time where there were no borders, but many wars. She welcomed all the foreigners in her hotel. She was good and kind. She knew you were tired. She would greet you with a handshake, welcome you and invite you in to rest. All the foreigners would arrive there exhausted and afraid, but Tia Juana would always welcome you. She was very well loved by many. The manufacturing era had arrived and it was booming. Word spread rather quickly and soon people from all over the world started to arrive. It didn't matter if you didn't speak Spanish, what color your skin was, or what you were wearing. What Tia Juana mostly wanted was for you to make it. The foreigners that stayed with Tia Juana, they all said the same thing. I'm just here for a few days, and then I'm heading to the United States. But Tia Juana's heartwarming welcome was so immense that the foreigners soon forgot to continue with their path. The Chinese arrived, the Haitians arrived, and the American dream soon vanished. Tia Juana just made you feel at home. Hondurans and Ukrainians arrived. She would be 250 years old today, or simply a story of an impossible tale. But I like to dream, to dream about Tia Juana's legacy, to welcome everyone, a legacy that continues to live on through her nephews. Today, it's home to more than two million people. She is kind, and if you let her take you in, you are part of the family. Welcome to Tijuana. We didn't have a lot of money, so we decided to camp out at the most luxurious hotel in Tijuana. It was free. But to get to the Ocean View room, we had to pay with our own sweat. We had to push our bikes uphill with all our gear for almost three hours to be welcomed at the peak by the northwest winds. But we had already trained for this. In Mexicali, we said goodbye to the flat roads and the last time was at the Salty Lagoon, Laguna Salada, where Pavarotti gave his last concert. And we were there imagining thousands of people in a place where we were all alone dozens of kilometers away. We were lucky enough to see the lagoon with water. And what we saw, Fernanda called it nothing and everything. Because if you're in a hurry, there's nothing. But if you embrace the silence, there's everything. The following day, we camped out before we head up trail at La Rumorosa, who would bring us closer to meet our future Tia. We went up slow, so slow that we ran into an oasis full of palm trees in the middle of La Rumorosa. 
so slow that we camped out a few days in a dead silence that was causing fear in Fernanda. Because listening to nothing but the coyotes howling at night is enough to scare any foreigner. Even though we didn't need a time traveling machine to travel back in time, we decided to horseback ride the old Rumorosa Trail, the real trail, where it used to take up to five days to get from Mexicali to Tijuana. It was impossible to continue our path without passing through Tecate. To get to know and try all the new things, the day finally came where we would arrive to Tijuana, the most visited border city in the world. And after the chaos, calm arrived. Because a few hours before, while heading uphill at the Cerro Colorado, there was Jimmy, who saw us heading up, while he was aiming his rifle at me in the Matamoros neighborhood. It had no bullets, so he claimed. He warned us that in two hours time, knife will be upon us and it will be safer to reach the peak by then. I look at Fernanda's face and try not to worry her because he who warns you will not harm you. Although it wouldn't be the first time someone points a rifle at me, it was the first time someone did at us together. Fernandez that made it very clear to me that I would have to take care of her. But in reality, she's the one that takes care of me. When it's cold during the day, we prepare coffee together. And by nightfall, we were spectators of Tijuana's best free concert. See it in a hurry, because here everyone's in a hurry, in a hurry to get there, in a hurry to leave. Now it's time to head down from the Cerro Colorado. Perhaps through the wrong way, but that's the way we wanted to take to enter Tijuana for the first time together. Through a solitary path, painted in dark red, but through Fernanda's lens, everything's so perfect. Sometimes I ask myself, what would happen if she stopped smiling and she's no longer impressed by a new place, by a mural? What would happen if she didn't want to try new food again or to get to know other cities or cross other deserts or to find out who makes the better taco, if Mexicali or Tijuana? Because for her, it's not where, but who prepares it. Because she says, the flavor of the steamed taco, it is given to you by the one who serves it to you when he invites you to taste it. Before, it didn't make sense how fast I was going. And then we were going so slow through the cities and towns that we forgot about time. As contradictory as itself, it was impossible to find out what Tijuana is in 15 days. In a week's time, we will be crossing through San Isidro and we will say goodbye to Tijuana. It's impossible to hate Tijuana. Those who stop for a few days end up staying a lifetime, and the nephews that move on miss visiting her. And when you go for the first time, they tell you, welcome to Tijuana, let's go get some tacos. But at night, Tijuana rests, and the Tijuana that everyone wants to change appears. Tijuana has history, but it has been forgotten. Today it's referred to it as unsafe and fearful. You either hate Tijuana or you love it, but it's impossible to hate Tijuana. Today we say our goodbyes and I say thank you to our Tia. And I want you to know that my dream is for your legacy to continue for the next hundred years. We will miss you, but like all your nephews, we will be back.